Hello everybody, this is Soviet Russian Bear. I hope you're doing well. Seven years ago, on March 18th, Russia and the Republic of Crimea signed an agreement on the formation of two new subject, subjects of the Russian Federation, the Republic of Crimea and the federal city of Sevastopol. On March 17th, the Independent Republic of Crimea, which included the former Autonomous Republic of Crimea and Sevastopol, was proclaimed. A day earlier, on March 16, 2014, a referendum was held in Crimea and Sevastopol on the entry of Crimea into Russia. All this time, on the anniversary of the, re the re reunification of Crimea with Russia, it was about all about what Russia gave to the peninsula. And Russia has really given a lot. The most important thing is security from the Kiev coup plotters who built the Nazi re dictatorship but also the restoration of the destroyed over the years of Ukrainian domination and the creation of new transport infrastructure, including the Crimean Bridge, huge investments in the development of the peninsula's economy, the autonomous supply of Crimea with electricity, the modern level of medicine, adequate education in the native language, a drastic decline in the level of corruption, and a lot of other things which over the time begin to be taken for granted, even though back in February 2014 it seemed like an unattainable dream. But the entry of Crimea into Russia is a two-way road. It would never have happened if it was assumed that only Russia would give and the peninsula would act exclusively as a recipient of various benefits. I think it's time to talk about what Crimea has given to Russia. The return of the Russian people to their homeland is often celebrated, but there are ethnic Russians in the Baltic states and Belarus, and some of them have survived in Central Asia and Transcaucasia and in former Ukraine. Not only Crimea was a Russian region, even if we do not consider the population of the old Russian lands captured by the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, the whole of Novorossiya from Odessa to Donetsk through uh, Dnepropetrovsk was incorporated into Russia and settled at the same time as Crimea. Many lands even a little earlier, both the flow of settlers and the national composition of the population in these territories largely coincided. Moreover, about 2 million people were returned together with Crimea, of which 1.5 million were actually Russians. While in Donbass at the time there were over 7 million people, the vast majority of them were Russians. Of these, 4 million are still, for 7 years now, fighting for their return to Russia. So, we can state that the ethnic composition of the population, if it played a role, was not decisive. In Crimea, which has always been the all-union health resort, they like to emphasize the unique climate and recreational opportunities of the peninsula. But the Russians also had a great vacation in Sochi. By the way, many believe that the Crimean service is still far from the Sochi level, although, of course, there are different opinions. There are no friends for the taste and color. Before the coronavirus, many Russians preferred to vacation in Spain, Italy, France, Turkey and Egypt. Since Europe is going through a pandemic much worse than Russia, there is a reason to believe that after the coronavirus, the Spanish vacation will be more affordable, so Crimea will have to withstand serious competition with Europeans who are hungry and ready to serve Russians at their resorts, like the Turks in the best years, only cheaper. There were no unique industrial facilities or mineral resources in Crimea. Everything that is there is on the mainland of Russia in much larger quantities. So when we talk about what Crimea gave to Russia, we must remember the history of its first incorporation by Catherine the Great. The Empress was not interested in the very dubious beauty of the southern coast at that time. If you carefully study the engravings and paintings of that time, you will find that today's blooming region then consisted mainly of almost bald, sparsely covered with bushes mountains and descended to the sparsely populated sea coast. The sparse population of the South Crimean coast was engaged in fishing, smuggling and sea trade. 
by the first thing but the first thing that was created and shown to the Catherine in Crimea was a well-fitted sea harbor in Sevastopol and the Russian Black Sea Fleet. In all ages and in our time, the main uniqueness of Crimea is its military strategic position. Whoever controls the peninsula controls the entire Black Sea with all its costs. The fleet of Crimea can get to any point of, of the Black Sea in the shortest time possible as well as intercept any naval expedition of any enemy moving to the shores of Russia. With the advent of aircraft, long-range radars and cruise missile systems, the importance of Crimea has only increased. Today, it is possible to control the Balkans, Turkey, Transcaucasia, the Middle East and the entire Eastern Mediterranean from its territory. Crimea is the center of the Russian position on the southwestern flank, the main bastion that ensures the security of the country. As long as there is a Russian garrison in Crimea, no NATO missiles and tanks can appear near Kharkov. Hitler's generals did not consider it possible to break through the, to the Caucasus and the Volga region until Manstein took Sevastopol. Crimea is too serious of a threat to the deep coastal flank and rear of any land army advancing through Ukraine to be ignored when planning a campaign against Russia. Not that without Crimea, Russia would be completely unable to ensure its security in the southwest, but it would be necessary to create excessive military capacity in the region designed to compensate for the strategic importance of Crimea. Now, compensatory measures must be calculated by any adversary of Russia. Crimea has leveled the importance of the Ukrainian foothold and saved the Russian defense so much money and resources that any investment in it pays off with interest. Everything else, from historical and cultural monuments to the recreational opportunities of the southern Crimean coast, is a pleasant bonus to the strategic importance of the peninsula. But that's not all. The strategic position of any location is important only if the state has the ability and desire to protect this place, to use its strategic position. Certainly, no one in their right mind and sober memory, except for the perestroika leadership of the USSR, will tell you that we are such pacifists, pacifists that we will not go to war and, under any circumstances. We are already fine. Therefore, to find out whether your opponent is bluffing, demonstrating readiness for radical, including military actions, to protect their vital interests, or is really ready to turn the whole world into dust tomorrow, you can only experiment. Previously, nations did exactly this and unleashed wars. But with the advent of nuclear weapons, such experiments became extremely dangerous for experimenters themselves. It has become more difficult to test your opponent's readiness to fight, and the price of an error has increased immeasurably. Before Crimea, our Western quote-unquote partners believed that Russia would never go to a direct confrontation with the West. They even considered the 2008 five-day five war an accidental misunderstanding, a consequence of Saakashvili's inadequate information policy, who confessed to the aggression before the West had time to declare him a victim. The rapid march of Russian troops across Crimea, the complete blockade and bloodless disarmament of the Ukrainian army group, comparable in size and combat capabilities, the expulsion of quote-unquote curious NATO ships from the Crimean shores, and they tried to approach there even when Crimea was formally considered Ukrainian, the referendum had not yet been held. Moscow's readiness for a sanctioned war with the collective West all this already showed in 2014 that Russia has finished concentrating and it is ready to defend its strategic interests anywhere in the world, using all the forces and means available to the Russian state. 
Besides, this allowed the potential adversary to see the Russian army in action and uh, understand that the West is facing the question not, to, not of how to defeat Russia in the event of a direct military clash, but how to resist it. This cooled down the hotheads who were preparing a war in Europe involving Russia and significantly reduced the risk of a military threat to our country, allowing us to redirect our resources from the defense direction to peaceful development. Russia's military spending began to decline rapidly after 2014. Perhaps in this admonition of the West, the role of Crimea itself is indirect. It turned out to be a point of military confrontation between Russia and the West, during which the West was forced to retreat, in fact admitting its defeat without military action. But Crimea was chosen by the West as a place of conflict because its strategic importance for Russia was enormous. And if Moscow had lost there, the issue of further confrontation would have been resolved in favor of the Western powers. So Crimea is not only a smithy and a health resort. First of all, it is an outpost of Russia, an impregnable bastion that controls the Middle East, which is a key region from the point of view of global politics. Besides, this is the place of Russia's quiet and bloodless victory in a decisive battle with NATO, a victory that ensured the peaceful development of our country for years or even decades to come. But of course, all this is doubly pleasant to realize, relaxing in the shade of parks on the shore of the Black Sea. Anyway, this has been Soviet Russian Bear. I hope you are doing well. Stay strong, stay safe, peace, love and prosperity to you all. And uh, remember, Crimea was not an annexation but incorporation and Crimea returned home. So. If you like this video, please click the like button. And if you want more videos like this, please click that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you never miss a new video. And trust me, I have videos to come. So please also consider supporting me financially. It helps me a lot. Anyway, до свидания. Bye-bye. See you soon.